All right, um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the things that we've been doing uh, in education uh, the last five years, and then talk broadly about kind of what works, what doesn't seem to work, uh, and its implications for philanthropy. Now, it wasn't until I got involved in education that I heard about the cardiac test. See, I've heard about T-test, I've heard about F-test, I've heard about joint F-test. I never heard about the cardiac test until I got involved in education, right? And, and after Eli Broad contacted me, I decided to visit some schools just to, you know, begrudge, I mean, you know, just the, just the flat of the guy. I'm going to go visit some schools. And I walked in and someone says, Professor, this after school program is great. You ought to help us raise some money. I said, well, I'm not sure I'm any good at raising money, but how do you know it works? And they looked me straight in the eye and said, can't you feel it in your heart? That's the cardiac test. Doesn't work there. Doesn't work here. And it's that kind of intuition that, that, that scares me, because education has a lot of intuition, of course, but our intuition can be exactly wrong. It's a crazy thing about this type of thing. Not only do you have to find an answer to an incredibly complicated problem, you got to find one that people like. Teacher incentives. We spent $75 million in New York City paying teachers to increase their test scores. Absolute zero. Nothing. The point evaluation in Tennessee. Paid teachers to do better on math. Absolutely zero. It's been well evaluated. Zero as zero gets. What do we do? Man, we got to take another crack at those teacher incentives. That's going to be great. And I want to talk about that in the discussion today. It's an incredible thing. I, I've never seen this in any other industry in which we have these things that we like, like teacher incentives, right? And when they don't show the results we want, then we do the old, it's really valuable on the stuff we didn't measure trick, right? People say, oh, Roland, but you didn't measure teacher morale. I didn't know that was related to teen pregnancy. <laughs> right? Whereas something like student incentives, which we don't like, as soon as that shows mixed results, what do we do? Told you that wasn't going to work. See you later. Right? My wife does cancer research. Um, <laughs> uh, time may think uh, I, I'm, I'm influential in the world, but I'm at least third most influential in my house. Um, and, and so she does cancer research, and when I showed her the Harlem Children's Zone results, she says, wow, sweetheart, you're almost done. And I said, come again? And she said, if we had found that there were 10 hospitals in the world who had cured cancer, we would all ascend on those hospitals and say, please teach us what you're doing. Right? We've got people dying over here. And when she told me that, like this light bulb went off. And I said, my God, in education reform, we don't do that. We say, wow, you have something that's phenomenally doing great things for poor kids? Well, that's interesting. But our foundation's into technology. It's different. My view of this, again, my humble view, is that if we take data seriously, if we're honest with the data, and if we allow the data to shine through our own biases so that we don't say, well, I think this should work, so let me push and make sure it works, that's how we're actually going to make progress, right? One step, uh, one experiment at a time. It's because the way funding works, we all go directly to our particular uh, foundation or individual and we want to make sure that they're happy, OK? Um, I think foundations ought to, be get, ought to be funding armies, not just soldiers. Because I think there are tremendous complementarities if people actually work together. And they never will if they don't have the incentive to do so. Right? The incentive now is to differentiate your product so that you can get more market share within the philanthropy. Not to come together and say, hey, you know what? Instead of coming to you as each individual organization, we've all five of us, here's our joint proposal, and we're going to solve a big problem, right? And, and maybe that sounds crazy, but to me, as a, as a grantee myself, uh, there, there's no incentive to, to, to work with anyone else. And I think if this problem could be solved in a vacuum by one program, it'd be solved. I've been arguing for an hour here against our intuition. 
I think that where intuition is really important is taking something that works somewhere else and, as you called it, piecing it together for Arkansas or wherever one is, but then you have to keep measuring. That's the whole point, right, is that you got to reiterate on what might be working. Um, I would like for you all to join me in thanking Dr. Roland Fryer for a great, very interesting discussion. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you.